Hey there, internet friends. It's been a hot minute, but I'm back now with some more mini painting goodness. Recently, I was painting some minis for some friends and realized I hadn't done much crafting lately. So I really wanted to get those creative juices flowing again and decided to surprise them with an epic display base for their miniatures when they're not at the tabletop. One that blended the miniatures' bases into the scenery and was magnetized so that they always stayed in place. If you want to see how I built it, let's check it out. These are the two minis I'm working with for this project. This knight and the rogue have two very different settings in my head when I look at them. The rogue looks to be some sort of noble dressed in regal clothing, while the knight looks like she's either mid-combat or expecting something to pop off momentarily. So I had to decide how to reconcile these two different ideas and build a base that would suit the both of them. I decided that a scene of the two of them entering into an abandoned keep, overgrown and filled with the remnants of battle would serve them well. The rogue could be up high on the cobblestone terrace surveying the area as the knight moved to the lower area clearing the grounds. With that in mind, I grabbed a 6x6 inch square of quarter inch MDF and a few pieces of XPS foam. Here I've already done some of the prep work, but I still need to finish the cobblestone pattern down the side and onto the stairs. I do want to make sure that the stairs look very worn down, so the easiest way of doing that is breaking the edges here with a hobby knife. I tested giving the stairs some sort of edge banding or retention wall, but almost immediately decided against it and covered that up with cobblestone patterns. The real name of the game here is just winging it until you've got something you like. Even if you screw up, it's easy enough to grab another piece of foam and come up with a new pattern. Finally satisfied with my stairs, it's time to move on to the front face of the raised area. It's also time to admit my deep dark secret. One of the areas I consider myself the weakest in is coming up with random patterns that don't look like absolute garbage. I'm proud enough of my work on the stairs that I don't need to prove myself again on the front of this thing, so I'm going to use a cobblestone roller from Green Stuff World to take care of that. Personally, I think it's perfectly fine to use tools like this that make your life easier and cut down your work time. At the end of the day, it's still something I'm creating that I'm happy with, regardless of whether or not I'm the one that came up with the pattern. After I use the roller, I come back with a ballpoint pen to deepen the pattern so we don't lose the texture when putting on the coat of Mod Podge later. And hey, that's looking pretty good for a bunch of pink rocks. Now it's time to add something to break up the top area. We're going to use the plastic mesh fence technique I learned from the tabletop engineer to create an iron fence here, cutting out sections until we've got a pattern we like.
Initially, I planned to create some end posts and a sort of topper for this, but I actually realized that the pointed ends here push directly into the foam, which will make it really easy to glue up if I just flip it over. I do want this to look like it's falling apart though, so let's cut out a damaged section and bend it to fit that look. I'm happy with all this so far, so it's time to glue it down. to confess, I lost some footage here. But I'll point out the important things so it'll be like nothing ever happened. The cobblestone is just a thin strip of foam that I've applied the roller to and gone over with the pin. The cutouts in the raised area and the cork are the stars of the show for this build though. For the foam cutout, I simply traced the base I intended to use for the miniature and used my X-Acto to slowly cut out chunks until the base would sit in the hole flush with the surface. Then I cut out a section in the center for a magnet and glued it in. I wanted a more uniform base when the mini isn't there, and also to make sure that the magnet wouldn't get pulled out while removing the mini, so I cut out a circle of plastic card and glued it in place over that. The cork one was much simpler. The cork is roughly the same thickness as a miniature base, so I put down one piece of cork and fit pieces around the base until I had a shape I liked. Once that was done, I glued everything down, cut a hole for the magnet, and added some thin super glue to the cork to add some durability. I've also added some bits of detritus around to break up the flat areas. Now, I want to fill in the rest so we're not looking at smooth MDF. I want the cork area to go all the way to the rock the mini is standing on, so I'm taping off the edges to have a clean base after. With that done, I take an old brush and start applying Vallejo Dark Earth texture to everything but the cobblestone landing. This stuff is awesome and looks great, but in my experience it is hard to come by and it's absolutely not the cheapest hobby product. You can achieve a similar look using pre-mixed grout from the hardware store, and that's what I'm going to be switching to once I run out of this. I make sure to go over the edges of the cobblestone in the lower area since I really want to sell that overgrown look here. Once I'm happy with how that's looking, I make sure to pull out the mini and get the tape off, as this is much easier before the product dries. Now before I seal the foam and paint this, I want to clean up the edges so we have a nice smooth texture for all the sides. I'm using some drywall filler here to cover up all the holes, bumps, and other oddities on the side of the piece. Once that dries, I'll quickly run a piece of higher grit sandpaper over it to smooth it out some more. With that done, it's time to seal this and finally start painting. Using Black Magic Base Coat, a watered down mixture of Mod Podge and black paint, I cover the entire piece. This will make the piece much sturdier and essentially serve as my primer for those areas.
Now just to wait for that to dry before we can start painting. That Mod Podge layer has dried fairly transparent, so I'm going to go ahead and paint all my stonework with a stone gray color as my base coat. Before moving on to adding some details to the cobblestones, I go ahead and paint all the dirt areas with a flat brown. For the stone detailing, I chose a handful of colors that I thought would look good and started randomly applying these. After realizing how boring and repetitive this was, I took the piece somewhere else and worked on it off camera. And we're back. And I forgot to turn the camera back on before I started. So what I've done here is make a wash with a sepia acrylic ink, some thinner, and some flow improver. I want to apply that to all the stones to bring them to a more uniform color, while also adding some significant wear and grime to them. I apply it everywhere on the stones, and then come back and wipe it off the raised areas. After that dries, I want to add a little more pop to them, so I dry brush all the stones with a grayish light brown color. And this part is probably overkill since I'm going to cover the entire area shortly after this, but I want to avoid a uniform dirt color and wet blend in a few more shades of brown all over the place. While we're waiting for that to dry, I go ahead and paint the edges of the piece black. You may have noticed that some of the stones in the top section are lowered. I did this by pushing in the area with a ballpoint pin. The idea was to add some depth to the top, but also this will allow us to create some puddles with Mod Podge's dimensional magic. I simply squeeze it out into the recessed areas and that's it. This will look awesome once it dries. It's time to fill out the lower area. I mix together some PVA glue and water and apply it everywhere I want static grass to stick to on the area. Then I fetch the groundskeeper, which is what I'm calling my hobbled together static grass applicator. I made this from an electric fly swatter I got at Harbor Freight for $3, and it comes with all the safety features one can expect of a $3 tool meant to electrocute bugs. In short, if you make one too, please be careful. I've shocked myself a few times now, and I'm not going to say it feels great. The static grass I'm putting down here is a homemade mix of finely cut hemp rope mixed with paint. I use it for the larger areas, and I'll come back in later to add some more detail with the nicer stuff from Army Painter. Once you've covered the whole area, flip it over and knock off anything that's not glued down. After I give that a chance to dry just a bit, I take my glue and water mix and dump it into a spray bottle. Anything you've got will work for this, I'm using an old makeup setter spray bottle here. Take that and spray it sporadically around the piece, essentially anywhere you want the next layer of stuff to stick. Apply another round of static grass the same way as before. At this point, I also use the leftover grass to apply to the base of the miniature that will be in this area. Got a pretty good looking grassy area now, but I still think it can be kicked up a notch. 
Taking an eyedropper filled with the water and glue mixture, I put glue at random places all over the lowered area. Taking various things to fill in the texture, I begin sprinkling them about the area. Here I'm using Army Painter's Black Battleground, a mixture of brown, green, and yellow flocking I made out of sawdust, and some green tea leaves to really add a pop of color and texture to this. I'm a bit more strategic about where I put the tea leaves as I want them to look like dead leaves that have piled up in the corners of the steps. Jumping to something completely different for a moment here, I decided that to add to the story of this piece a bit more, it should look like it had seen a really big battle. Maybe the reason this keep is abandoned was that it was overrun by a horde of orcs that defeated the people that live here. To sell this story, we're going to need some weapons and some other stuff scattered about the place. Here I've got some various spare parts from other minis and weapon swap packs that I'm painting up. I've also got the top of a Christmas ornament, it looks exactly like a brazier when painted up. I give all of these a quick paint job and start testing out where they should go on the piece. Happy with my placement, I glued down everything and added an orc skull into the brazier to make it look like maybe the dead had been burned before they left. I also decided to glue down a few more skulls scattered throughout the piece. a bit of charred area to the brazier with some ground up black and white pastels and set that in place with a drop of acrylic thinner as well. Getting closer to done, I decided the fencing needed a little more pizzazz, so let's add some overgrowth to it as well. This is a homemade flocking from sawdust and craft paint. I mix it up with a PVA glue and can use an old brush or a sculpting tool to start applying it to the piece as hunks of moss. And then to add a little bit more splash of color, I sprinkled in some bright green flocking sparingly across the top. As a final attempt to break up the uniformity of the raised area, I'm adding in some broken pieces of terrain. These are column pieces and stonework cast from Hearst Art molds that I've painted to add a pop of color to the cobblestones here. After finding a spot I liked them, I glued them down, and that's it.
that's it for this epic display base. I hope you liked it, and I hope to be back with more projects for you soon. Until then, stay safe and don't forget to hobby, internet friends.